I wanted to make a cool rock and roll ski film. Ah, all of a sudden it turned into a coming of age story of being like everything I've traveled all over for is right here. Oh man, I am so excited for who we're going to be talking to and who I'm going to introduce in just a second here. He is a pro skier that grew up in the state of uh, Michigan and has produced a feature film, which Nick and I, Nick, got a wave to say hi. We got to, we got to do a screening of it a couple of days ago and Matt is a phenomenal. We're going to dive into all of that. But first, let's introduce Mike King. Mike, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing wonderful. Thank you, Matthew and Nick for having me. Uh, Midwest skiers, I'm a big fan, so uh, I appreciate you guys having me on. Oh, we're, we're stoked to have you on and, and, and just talk about this film because as filmmakers ourselves, I mean, there's so much that has gone into it. We're going to dive into this. Uh, but first, let's just bring it really far back, right? Like, where did you learn to ski? Where did you grow up skiing? Give us your little, like, in, how'd you get into skiing? So I grew up in northern Michigan, uh, just north of Traverse City, uh, out of cherry orchards. So busy during the summers, but the family had time in the winter. Uh, so we just, I grew up skiing at this tiny little tow rope hill, um, 250 vertical feet, Mount Mixaba. And, uh, Dude, yes. <laughs> you know, the home hill was really, uh, Shush, uh, Shanty Creek and then Boyne Mountain, both of them about 20 minutes away. So skiing was like daycare for the family. Oh, I love it. I mean, rope, ropes are, are in our blood. We actually have behind Nick, you might be able to see it in the in one angle, uh, when we actually produce this, but. We have the Highland Hills webcam rolling in our studio in our office 24 wow. seven. The thing is just always going. <laughs> it's, it's pretty awesome. We're rope people. Mixaba is amazing. I remember going there okay. for the first time and uh, it just hit me like a ton of bricks. I'm like, these kids don't care how big it is. They are just having a blast. You know, Michigan, how did you, what did your path to pro skiing look like? How, how did you go from Michigan skier to pro skier. You know, I think it's just the classic evolutionary ski bum steps. You know, we, we skiing was just fun and that's what we wanted to do. So uh, the hills were small and we didn't really have much of a terrain park. So got into ski racing and uh, just trying to do it and have fun. But the internet was up and running. Um, and so I was watching videos of all these people out west um, and I knew that's that's where I wanted to go. And so you know, my whole family, my brothers and sisters were all into skiing. And uh, so I was just kind of following along and it seemed very natural to just want to get out west and con continue skiing. And, you know, we're seeing the films and the videos coming from out west. Uh, and so we we're trying to emulate that here in Michigan just with the, you know, handy cam with my brother and uh, progressively getting better at that and better at skiing. But I think uh, you get to ski a lot in the Midwest, you know, every day after school, on the weekends. So, you know, you really build a really good foundation for it. And then when you get the opportunity to go out West, you're just like so hungry to ski in the mountains that there's like no bad days. You're just like engulfing it. So yeah, loved it. That's awesome. And I mean, it, it, it definitely develops and breeds great skiers here in the Midwest. And and, and then we got we to gotta transition to this this movie because I think it's so phenomenal. There, there's so much to unpack here. But but let's just first start at the very beginning. You know, obviously this, this was a movie that was, I, I'm sure it wasn't on your radar a couple of years ago. Take us there. Like what, how did this idea come to you? How did we get, how did we get Lake Effect? Yeah, it, you know, it, it really wasn't on my radar at all. Uh, I was skiing and I was never in a better place with my sponsors and opportunities to um, be skiing on a lot of big mountains and um, skiing powder and chasing it. And that's the direction I was on. But I also knew that there's a lot of other really talented skiers out there and uh, budgets are hard and it wasn't getting any easier for that. Um, and I, I had some big inspiration from Mike Kornbeck and Spencer Millbacher that both had awesome careers uh, out west. And, and they're back in Michigan. They put out some amazing uh, films such as Snow Sides and um, really uh, just watching them do it in Michigan. Um, it was always in the back of my mind, but I'm like not ready yet. And so I was skiing in Washington when COVID hit really just didn't have any idea of what to expect 
you know, what was next. And then, you know, speaking with my sponsors and just hearing like, Hey, there's no budget. I'm, I'm just like, well, what am I, how am I even going to, you know, go out West and living in a van? Um, I didn't know where I was going to use the restroom or anything. So it, it, it felt very natural to just be like, Hey, let's, let's do this. Let's ski in Michigan. And, you know, I've been hearing so much about, um, the skiing and Mount Bohemia and, you know, I've known about it, but you know, I'm, skiing in in uh british columbia you know it wasn't really uh like i took it with a grain of salt so i i wasn't serious about it but then um it was uh you know pretty heavy for me to just like have everything i've been going for kind of come to a halt um but on the other hand i was also really excited to be here and experience something new and excited to see where that took me. It hit me really hard when we were watching it here. I kind of almost t shed a little tear because it was just, oh man, it's it, it really encapsulates. If, if anybody's watching this, you gotta go watch. You gotta go watch this film if you're a Midwest skier, especially if you're a Michigan skier. Uh, there's just so many feels about you know just the whole cycle of of skiing from every different level. And Mike did a phenomenal job of filming it, and it's beautifully shot. And I want to talk about that for a minute because it sounded like. When I was talking to you uh, last year, it sounded like you had to, because of COVID and everything going on, you had to pull on a lot of family members and people that n aren't necessarily camera people to come help you with this film. Talk about what it took to get this film actually made. Yeah. Uh, no, hey, I appreciate the the kind words, man. It means a lot. Um, yet the film was a, a much bigger endeavor than I expected. Uh, skiing out west, I was with other skiers that were so hungry and ambitious that there were people that wanted to do the same thing um coming here i had you know that same thing with with skiers and with some filmers but the difference was they're like hey we work a full-time job you know when how how can we want to be a part of this but our schedules aren't really free and i'm like oh my gosh like out west it's like drop everything the snow's here this is what we're doing and so uh, we didn't, I didn't really um, have anyone else on board on that same program. And so I did have several filmers that came out and they filmed and they did, they did an amazing job. But uh, it was, um, you know, small chunks. It was when they could make it happen. So a week here, a week there. And then filling in the, in the gaps between that, I did a lot of filming myself, um, you know, a lot of, uh, hey, babe, will you film this? Which, you know, quickly got tiring for, you know, my partner, Ella. And, uh, but there was other times when I'd put up the drone, I'd have my mom out there, she'd hit record on uh, on the tripod, I'd hand her the drone controller, I would ski, and then I'd, you know, she'd give me the controller, I'd land the drone, and uh, it was just like a lot of effort with a lot of people helping. My dad would be hitting the winch sometimes. Uh, it was a ton, but I had a lot of support from a lot of people taking time out of their days and, uh, you know, family members. So it was a, it was a huge effort, um, but people came through and, and we have a film that we're proud of, so we're excited. It really brings this professional visuals to the Midwest and some of the framing and some of the shots, some of the movement, I thought really mirrored what we see coming out of the mountains and what we see coming out of out west like some of the things were framed and filmed in in kind of a big mountain style so first of all how is that accomplished when you're talking to dad behind the drone controls and you're like film this like a warren miller film um and then secondly just because framing tells a story too i guess was that an intentional decision to kind of make things have that big mountain look and how does that tie into kind of the narrative or the the overall kind of arc of, of this film. Oh, uh, Nick, makes me so happy to hear, to get this question. And I appreciate it because, you know, uh, you know, we put a lot of work and effort into this. Um, I, I would say, you know, we're, with the family members and the people that weren't that familiar holding the camera, a um, lot more basic uh, static shots and things like that. But we 100% came in with the attitude of, I'm going to take everything I learned from skiing and filming out West with, with people that I look up to that are extremely talented at what they do, taking that knowledge I gained from them and being able to apply it here. So as it goes for, um, you know, composition and, uh, angles and trying to do it, we 100% wanted to, to represent it the best we could. And one of the things that I realized was 
when when we're skiing in the mountains, we might be, let's say we're in British Columbia and we're on a 5,000 vertical foot mountain. You're only skiing a small bench of that or even just a jump. And it's this, it's a small thing. We did that same thing here where we might be skiing the same vertical that some of these huge pillow lines that you see out west are um, just a couple hundred feet. Another thing, when we're filming with sponsors, it's like we're out and we have a certain amount of days to film to get these marketing assets. It's like if the snow's not great, you got to be good at making it look great. And, you know, we call it fool's gold. You know, you get four inches out west and the photos are coming out like it was two feet. And I got really good at making bad snow look good. And it's the same, it's the exact same thing. So it's like, hey, if we're, if the ski industry is doing that out West, why on earth are we not doing that here? Oh my gosh. Like the, 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 you know, the segment was skiing like some of the dunes and stuff. And I'm just like, I, I, I know, I know what that is and what it feels like. And it doesn't feel great, but he's making it look really good right now. Like talk, like, talk about that experience a little bit. Cause that was stunning. Like that, those shots with the Lake Michigan in the background, you got just enough snow where it's like, but you can still see the sand kicking off your turns. Like, you know, it's probably was not the yeah. best. Uh, yeah. Variable. It would be a term I would use to describe that snow. Um, and when you, you didn't have endless turns that were linked up that were just like, oh, so nice. And you might be hitting rocks, you might be hitting sand, but then the next turn, it's just like, oh, that was an amazing turn. And it, it felt so good. It's a lot of just trying to get through it and knowing that you're in a beautiful area and that you're going to come up with some amazing content. But also mentally, if you eliminate the camera, it was just crazy fun to be in those situations, to be right next to the lake. And it's so beautiful. And the sand mixed with the snow, it's just like, I'm just having this absolute wonderful time out there. Um, and so, you know, there's all these different aspects that goes into filming skiing and doing the turns and the actual skiing is one part of it. Skiing in that variable snow, all in all, it, it was a 10 out of a 10 experience. And yeah, maybe I didn't get the best turns all the time. Um, and some of the turns were really tough and I'm still pulling sand out of my nose. <laughs> But all in all, it's, it's just about skiing, about having fun and, and, and being out there. And, uh, you know, that's what we did. When you have all of Michigan to pick from in terms of locations, how did you nail down? Like, have you scoped that beach spot before? Like, how do you find these kind of atypical locations? I mean, there are segments at some of our, our usual heavy hitters, Bohemia and some of the spots you might expect. But then there are these other kind of surprise lines. And I guess, was it challenging to find these kind of off the beaten path places? Yeah, definitely. So, uh, you know, I'm lucky enough to, um, you know, live here in Northern Michigan and my partner Ella lives in empire where the sleeping bear sand dunes are. And so I had a bunch of spots where I'm like, once it snows, we're going here. The issue was when it snowed, it seemed like the snow never went to where, uh, I was looking or the wind came in at the wrong direction. So um, some of those dunes we traveled to is the first time I've been there. You know, we went down s further south um, to Arcadia, Arcadia Bluffs, things like that, that I've never been to. And it, it just worked out um, great at, at the time. And it was so weird that 20 miles uh, made a difference of, of getting eight inches to getting no inches. A lot of the spots came um, serendipitous, just looking around and um during the winter i felt uh like upset with myself that i didn't have a better list of this is exactly where we're going but the more i thought about it, it's like well i do have these things these spots that i really want to go but it just didn't line up for them really we found most of the stuff off the road like just driving around and seeing a cliff and being like i'm gonna hike into that and see what that's like and um so a lot of trial and error um, and, and the snow conditions were pretty rough because we filmed two years. And so the first year, the snow conditions were really rough. And so we spent a lot of time just scoping and finding spots and skiing them with terrible snow, but really, um, waiting until we get uh, a reset to go back. 
But as it goes for the spots, I felt it was su surprisingly um, easy that there's so many amazing spots out there, so many little cliffs. And we almost went with like um, kind of like a, like when you're on an urban street trip where you're just driving around looking for rails or yeah, something. Yeah, just, just marking like a, like a kid. You know, when you're a kid driving in a car and you're like, you put your fingers up and you're like, you're skiing, you know, the landscape. Is that what you, is that what Mike King is doing That's when he's doing yeah, pre I'm driving and I'm looking out both windows. And um, really, like if anyone else wants to do this, the biggest thing that helped me was a topographical map. I just like looked at where the big hills around were. And then I get on like Google Earth and see if there's, a, I can see any cliffs, see if I can see any clearings that might be okay to ski. Um, and really, it, I just, I'm feeling like I'm just scratching the surface that there's so much terrain out there and so many different places. So um, really, you know, from that UP all the way to Minnesota, you know, we're, um, it just looks so good. It was a different style uh, than skiing in the backcountry in the mountains because you choose a zone and you just go out there and you're walking around or snowmobiling and, and that's the zone you pick. But this, you know, we might go to a few different spots, you know, get in the car with the ski boots and then drive two miles to another spot. Um, but uh, yeah, it was fun. I, I would say searching for the spots and finding the spots was probably the highlight of, of the film just because you know, I was looking at all these places in Michigan um, more intimately than I ever had. So it was really fun. Now, we've talked a lot about all of the great things and, and the happy moments. There's got there had to be some challenges here. Was, was there ever a moment that you were like, I don't know if this film's going to work. I know you filmed it over two years. So obviously, that's a long stretch of time. Is there was there a time that you're like, I don't know if this is going to happen. Like, I don't know if we're going to make enough content. There's going to be enough here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh huh. The first year, you know, it was it was never meant to be a multi-year film, um, but we just had such a bad winter the first year I was filming, and that was the winter of uh, 2020 and 2021, and um, it was like February 8th or something, and we had no shots, like maybe one day, and I was like so stressed out. I was just like, oh, I, maybe this is why... You know, we don't see uh, more of this style of content here because I'm like, how, you know, I was, I was just freaking out. Um, but but the snow came um, and we got some good stuff, but I felt like this wasn't a true Midwest winter. And if I'm making a Midwest ski film, uh, I got to give it justice. So then um, we're like, we're going to we're going to hold off um, and and hope for some more snow and the next year we did have a lot more snow and so then the other stresses were uh trying to find um crew and people to uh help film and help you know ski uh and then and then the last thing that was pretty hard was you know i made a lot of videos um but i've never really like filmed like a film and and trying to hit incorporate all these elements and so I was really struggling with the story and what I was trying to, to say here and uh, do that in a respectful way for, you know, the, all the people like you guys that are, are here shredding, like, who am I to come in and think I'm awesome because I, you know, can ski or something like this is happening. Um, and I just wanted to help share that. And so it. I didn't know how it was going to come together at all. And I was, you know, stressing about how to how do we show parents just dropping kids off at the hills and things like that um but uh so th so that was also hard and a little different uh just to incorporate all these pieces but uh in the end it kind of worked out i think so it it turned out great i i have to say like as i was watching it you know it hit so many elements uh like when holiday came up on screen you know these kids after school i'm like yes i'm like thank you for doing that because you can you know you could talk all day about big lines and bohemia and all this other stuff but at, at the heart and soul like we were talking earlier it really starts at places like holiday mixaba highland hills like and i love that you incorporated i mean you even got john d rest in peace like you even worked that in somehow like you really did do your homework you talked to the locals and uh the entire film felt 
very Midwest by a Midwest guy. And no, no point did I ever say this is not Midwest. Like Nick and I were looking at each other the entire time. We're like, this, this is a Midwest film. And it was so beautifully done. Wow. That, thank you so much. What's that means the world to me. Uh, you know, I'm still very self-conscious about the story and the film and, and was so, um, like I was saying earlier, I, I was really uh, stressing about how this was going to come together as a as a film and and how the story was really going to um, come together. And I wasn't, I really didn't know how that was going to happen until the editing process and um, and it, and it came together. I think that I I didn't have intentions for the story to be what it was i wanted to make a cool rock and roll ski film ah, um to make midwest skiers stoked and like that was my goal uh but but then it, it just kind of turned into something so much more in it and really being back in the midwest it was like this all of a sudden it turned into a coming of age story of being like everything i've traveled all over for is right here and uh that story just it felt really powerful and that's how i felt in my own heart and i was like i should just tell this number one and i'm just gonna ask you straight are we gonna see more films like this maybe you know maybe not exactly like this but are you gonna incorporate any more michigan style stuff into your content yes absolutely it's hard telling what that looks like right now uh, during the making of the film i was ranting that I was never making another ski film again because it was extremely it was a it was just difficult to make but you know hard to find funding and it was like pulling teeth and uh I just felt you know during the making of the film um that I was working extremely hard and I was broke and I had nothing to show for it and I just didn't feel like it was worth it at all. And then now that we've been able to show the film, people are really excited about it. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's all worth it. So I would love to continue to make ski content. Um, I hope that I can pay my bills and do that. Um, so right now I'm not biting off any big films like that, but there's going to be a lot of, a lot more content coming from me uh, that's going to be Midwest based. And I think what's so special about the Midwest is that uh, we have seasons and we have so much to offer. So there's going to be a lot more year round stuff. Um, I'm really into the water and surfing and sailing, skiing in the winters. Before we kind of start to wrap things up here, I got to ask you a couple of things. You know, being a pro skier from Michigan, uh, accomplishing what you have and obviously this film, uh, what kind of advice would you give? other skiers and riders that are from the Midwest that had grew up skiing uh, Mixaba, you know, what advice do you have for them that want to kind of pursue uh, a, a career similar to yours or, you know, go make a, fil a feature film, become a pro skier or rider? What kind of advice would you give those those uh, individuals? Ah, to do it, to j just to ski and to love it and, and have fun doing it and uh, to know that it can be done right here, you know? You... And your friends, you know, get a camera, use a phone, and you have the ability to showcase what you guys are doing and 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 to do it, to film it, and not to wait for anyone to uh, come do it for you. And that was a big learning experience that I had even making this film. Uh, you know, I've been waiting so long to have someone put me in their film, and... Uh, I was just tired of waiting. I was going to make my own film and I recommend that to everyone. So we had a premiere tour for this film and we had six stops. At every stop, we showed about four or five Michigan ski films, starting with high school kids in the local area that were filmed on their iPhone in a packed theater on the big screen and uh, people were going crazy. I think I had two uh, pivotal moments in my life. One was I was so concerned about s sponsors. Um, and I realized if I just focused on skiing, then the sponsors would come. And next thing I knew I had sponsors. And then the second one is anything you want with skiing, you got to go do it yourself and not expect anyone else to do it. You know, I made posters myself. I went to the print shop and picked them up because no one else was going to do it. 
and I signed those things and I gave them away. And I think you guys should do the exact same thing. And uh, don't be shameful about it and just go get it. And then Mike, I got to, I usually ask most of my guests this, especially people that, you know, have the, the stature of your, your uh, background is, what would you say to somebody that says there is no skiing in the state of Michigan? You know, I probably wouldn't say anything because it's like, make them think what they want to fake and uh, more for me, you know? Like, there's no need to, no need, you know, what do they say? Uh, bees don't try to convince flies that honey's better than shit. <laughs> I don't think I've heard that before. <laughs> I love it though. But in my in my in my own mind, in my own heart, uh, I fully believe that the heart of ski culture and community and the industry is here in the Midwest. Uh, that's where the most ski areas are. That's where normal people that anyone can get into the sport. There's so many programs to help people get into it affordably and get passes affordably and and it's just an amazing way to spend the winter it's so much more a part of a life um here in the midwest than it is uh out west where people live in cities and then they drive hours just to ski on the weekends and no disrespect to them but it's you know it's it's really special it's really a part of our culture here and uh so anyone that doesn't understand that you know i would just say, invite them to come out and go skiing. And, and you see the, the pots of chili cooking in the parking lots and the people that are so excited to be out there to ski, even though it's on a tiny hill and it's probably icy, you know, they're smiling and they're having a good time. And uh, that's what it's all about. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then, uh, Mike, just remind us, where can we watch this full film when it does uh, launch in a couple yeah, of weeks? Yeah, so... Here? Lake Effect's going to uh, drop online for free. It's going to be put on the TGR YouTube. It'll also be found at lakeeffectskifilm.com. And then if you're streaming, it's going to go on the TGR streaming platform. You can find it on your smart TVs or your streaming platforms. So download the TGR app and uh, you can stream it from there. So. Is there anything else, Mike, that you want to add in or that we missed that you want to talk about or anything like that? No, I, I just want to give uh, major shout outs to all the skiers uh, in the Midwest that came before me. Uh, Mike Hornbeck, Kyle Decker, Spencer Milbacher, so many talented people that really showed me the path. Mike Hornbeck has been such a massive inspiration to me and uh, has really uh, given me so much guidance and mentoring You know, my whole life as just a little kid that was messaging him on Facebook, he, you know, he was always there to, to help me, uh, point me in the right directions. And so, uh, you know, just grateful to be another member in this community. And, uh, I feel so grateful that people have received this film so well. Uh, can't wait to ski and, uh, you know, don't be strangers. Come say hi. So go crack open a beer and go watch this film because it is phenomenal. Uh, like Mike said, you can catch that over on TGR's website or on their YouTube channel. We'll be sure to link all of that below in the description here once that goes live. Mike, thank you so much for, for joining us and just chatting about this film. There's so much to unpack and I feel like I could talk to you for two more hours. Um, unfortunately, we do have to, to do work around here a little bit at least, but uh, thanks for thanks for joining us. This is awesome, and we gotta go shred sometime. I'm excited to come over to your side of the lake, and we gotta go, we gotta go rip up Mount Mixaba. That would be fun. Oh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> Matthew, Nick, thanks so much for having me. I'm a huge fan of all the work you guys are doing at Midwest Skiers. Uh, so keep keep it up and keep the stoke high. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.